I saw a gap and I backed myself and built a small Mexican restaurant and learnt a bunch about business, learnt how to run one and expand one across the country. I'm proud to say that Zambrero Group is the fastest growing restaurant in Australia and it allowed us to divert some time and funds into one of my other passions, which is education. And to this end, we were successful in building 15 IT centres and integrating them successfully into the wider education curriculum in the Asia-Pacific region. So I find myself a Scottish-born Australian doctor with Sri Lankan heritage now running a chain of Mexican restaurants <laughs> and <laughs> doing aid work in the Asia-Pacific regions in places like Cambodia and now in remote communities in Northern Territory. So I guess my life is a bit of a mess. So today I wanted to take a job seeing approach and just talk about three stories. No big deal, just three stories about why my life is such a mess and what I've learnt so far from it. The first story is about education, courage and determination. This story is set in a rural village near Gaul in Sri Lanka and this is where my mother was born. She was born to very humble beginnings. She went to a school with no walls and walked to it without any shoes. When she was eight, her father, my grandfather, lost his job, throwing a family that was worth about as much money as the clothes on my back today into financial ruin. Forced her to work as well as study under kerosene lamp at night time to keep up with her other students. On the faithful day her year 12 results came out, she raced back home to find out how she went. My grandfather beat her to it. She had, he had her results open in his hands and he studied it closely, solidly, paused in pensive thought and tears streaming down his face. And when she saw this, she thought she had completely blown it. She thought she had failed. And a life outside of the village had completely evaporated. The truth was that she not only topped her school, but topped her entire state. My grandfather was crying because he just couldn't afford to send such a talented girl to university. It was a good news story. She actually got a scholarship to study economics at Colombo University. She lived her life by the motto of expanding your life by the limits of your mind, and expanding your mind to the limits of your life. And she did that. She got a scholarship to do an honours. Then she got another scholarship to do a master's and then she got another scholarship to travel to the UK and do a PhD. Five days after she finished her doctorate, I was born and I was born into the cold Scottish winter. And I'd been born to a completely different world to the one that she had known. One where everything was possible if I put my mind to it and I owed it all to a very humble beginning. And it wasn't just me who benefited from this. My mum continued her life with a great amount of dignity, compassion, and a great deep-seated sense of responsibility to give back to her family and the community from where she came from. Indeed, the first stipend scholarship from the Bradford University she actually sent back the first pounds back home where her home was connected to electricity. She also spent some more money to build two wells that still service the village that where she came from. So it's not just me who's benefited from this and this is why I'm so passionate about education. You know, today is the 32nd year anniversary of when she actually hopped on a plane to travel from a tiny little village all the way to London. And she told me about her first day in London. You know, she was really scared. She had to find a hostel and all the buildings started looking the same. And she tried to find something to eat and she, she could find something in a corner store and she bought some chicken 
and she went back to the hostel and being unaccustomed to electric stoves, she actually placed the piece of chicken in the sink and submerged it in hot water and waited for the chicken to turn white for she reasoned it was cooked. And that was her first meal in London. It pointed out to me that there was clearly a big gap in technology and her understanding of electric stoves and the wood fire where she was used to and basically you know, it still didn't hamper how she went at school. She still went and on and did five degrees and became an extraordinary economist. And I think to myself, if she was born in this day and age, same place, same beginnings, would she still be able, would she still be able to get to the same heights? The truth is, what I believe is now the world that's moved so quickly with technology, with computers and the internet, this, this technology gap has broadened to a point where it is stopping people from progressing to the next level.